Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. We're going to talk about UX principles. I got my notes here. I don't know if I've ever covered this before in the 1300 videos I've put out, but whatever. We'll say UX principles for 2019, a quick introduction. Three bullet points. Cognitive load, something you got to pay attention to. We'll get into that in a second. The emotional snapshot of your page or your user interface. And we're going to look quickly at UX versus UI. And we'll use examples of Google and Craigslist in terms of the success of a user interface versus its beauty. Uh, I'll jump into this right away. If you look at Google and you look at Craigslist, these are very simple sites. Not exactly pretty, but hugely successful. And they're successful because A, they provide a service people want, and B, they're really easy to navigate. They're really easy to navigate. I was first introduced, ironically, to UX, user experience and UI, user interface design, when I was designing labels for my products. Now, it sounds kind of weird, but let me get into it. So I had these products. This is before I was a software developer. It was my first business where I had a line of water purification products that we uh, distributed and manufactured. And on our labels, we had to fit in some pretty complex instructions within a very... Oh, jeez. I gotta take the call. Got interrupted by a phone call. So if I remember, when I was designing these labels, I had to fit fairly complex information into a very small space. And that, uh, this information was instructions and I had to lead them step by step into, in, into how to use the product. And so it was, in a sense, it was user experience. It was UX, because UX is basically making the web page or the app's interface easy to understand so they don't have to try to figure out what, what they need to do to make your app work. And uh, with labels, just like a website or a user interface, it has to look good as well, although that's secondary in importance. And again, when I mentioned Google or I mentioned Craigslist, those are great examples of highly uh, popular and usable websites that, you know, they're not exactly going to win any design awards. So you'll see the importance of UX today not just in websites and apps like iOS apps or Android apps or in, uh, in, in operating systems, whether it be Windows or Mac OS, Linux, etc. You also see it in physical devices. You see it in phones. You see it in the stoves, whatever. UX is, uh, is a specialization these days. Good UX people are very hard to find because UX, there's a certain set of rules, but it's also a bit of an art to it. But there's a certain set of rules. So I'm going to teach you some of the rules that I've learned over the last few years in terms of designing UX for uh, user interfaces, whether it be websites, web apps, or mobile apps. Before I get into that, though, before I get into some of my UX tips, um, today, I'm recording this in, just after Christmas, Boxing Day 2018. The big challenge today in the technology space, whether you're building web apps or applications in general, mobile or whatnot, the challenge today is actually in uh, the UX, the user experience. Besides the fact that you have to have some sort of service that people want, but it's the UX that really makes the difference. If you can produce a really easy to use application that uh, solves a problem that people want solved, that UX is really going to make a huge difference in terms of whether or not you can have commercial success with the product. So UX is something you shouldn't ignore. And it's something that uh, should be woven into, uh, I would argue, into a basic a basic course on web design or web development, you should have some basic UX principles taught to you. So I'm going to give you a little a couple of snapshots here, a couple of tips and uh, to end off this video that I think most people will find very useful. So number one, number one principle, UX tip. You want to have consistent user interface elements, colors, nomenclature, shape. So the colors, 
of your buttons should be consistent. You don't have on one screen the buttons are orange and on the other screen the buttons are blue. That will confuse people. You have a consistent nomenclature, the way you label your buttons or you label elements in, in your uh, web apps or your website, your, uh, your whatever type of user interface. A consistent nomenclature is also very important. It could be down to like, you know, if you have uh, a set of links in a page, either they're all underlined or they're not, don't have some that are underlined, some that are not underlined, that would just confuse people. So that's just a couple of quick examples. Number two, you want to reduce cognitive load by reducing many little niggles, many little things. Cognitive load is a concept in psychology, cognition, cognitive, cognition. Basically, the more people have to think about something, the more there's their brain has to work to try to figure out what's going on. The more the brain has to work, the more resistance it will have in terms of wanting to visit your site or use your app. So you want to do whatever you need to do to reduce cognitive load. And reducing cognitive load has a lot to do with consistent UI elements, uh, proper naming, that kind of thing. So you want to reduce that cognitive load. So one of the things I do when I look at a web app or look at any type of user interface I'm designing, I look at it and I try to um, see what the initial reaction is, my initial emotional reaction is to that page. Does it seem easy? Does it, when I come to it, does it look overwhelming and complex or does it seem very inviting? And that's a, a good indicator of the cognitive load. And what you want to do is you want to get some people who haven't worked on the, on the website, haven't worked on the web app, haven't worked on the mobile app or whatever. People who have fresh eyes who haven't seen it because when you've been writing code or designing this, the, the user interface, it's become very familiar to you. So unless you're very, very experienced or able to disassociate from your own knowledge of the system, since you're intimately knowledgeable of it, uh, and that takes a lot of skill to develop that ability, uh, you, uh, you're better off to find somebody who has never worked on it, somebody who's uh, your target audience, so that they can look at it with fresh eyes and see what their reaction is. Number three, you want to have localized dialogue boxes. This is like, uh, it's, such a, it's one of my pet peeves, so I mentioned it. Localized, di localized dialogue boxes is if somebody clicks OK and you give them a response, don't have the response up here or over here or down here. If they click OK on the button, it appears right there, OK, or appears right over the OK button. OK, we acknowledge this. Localized dialogue boxes, I just... Out of left field, I mention this because this is something, it's so basic, but some people make that mistake. It's weird. And number four, breathing space between your page or your user interface elements. You don't want to have all kinds of buttons and options all squished together. You want to use breathing space. I call it breathing space. It's just a lot of white space in between elements. You can group and categorize aspects of user interface by creating, uh, by using white space, White space, breathing space, same thing. By using the white space, the breathing space between groups of elements. And that will create, uh, that will go a long way, by the way, having this breathing space. It will go a long way to creating this perception of, uh, of uh, a very user-friendly user, user interface. So these are my four tips. Consistent UI, reduce your cognitive load by re reducing a bunch of little things, localized dialog boxes, and lots of breathing space. There's much more to UX than this, but this is a quick intro. And if you follow these four tips here, it will go a long way to making your apps much more successful in uh, people's hands. All right, I hope you found this useful. We'll talk soon.